Hey guys, what is up? Lefty back here again, and thanks for checking out the video. So today, we're going to be talking about a new holster from G-Code, so let's get right into it. All right, so if anybody has been, you know, been watching my channel or is familiar with my channel, they know I'm a big fan of G-Code. I got a whole bunch of this shit in terms of holsters and actually mag pouches. I think they're probably the best mag pouches and probably one of the best for holster makers, for especially inside the waistband. So uh, they do have a new holster out right now. <clears throat> it's kind of their Phenom series, which is a kind of a new uh, design. This one is called the Speed. They do have one called the Stealth which is a little bit different. It adds to the price. This one, I believe, is 55 bucks, which is what I purchased it for. The Speed, or excuse me, the Stealth, has a different cutout here. Shows a little bit more of the barrel, which I'm not sure why they do that. Uh, it also has a tactical fuzz on the inside and the outside of the holster. Uh, and I believe it retails for right around like 90 bucks. It also has this little uh, mojo thing that comes out, which basically pushes the gun closer into like your body for the grip, so you don't print and all that stuff. So... <clears throat> Let's get right into uh, the Speed one in particular because the basically the Stealth kind of translates, not 100%, but it is, I have a couple of things to say I want to, or at least I want to say about this holster, so uh, yeah. So first and foremost, actually, what I want to do is actually say that I've already recorded this video before. Uh, <clears throat> I, this is, so right now, this holster is now in left-handed uh, configuration. When I recorded it previously, it was not, and I made a big sticking point about that because I think it was kind of silly of them to do a launch of a product that <clears throat> obviously is a holster obviously there's a big market out there for left-handed users especially because there's not a lot of people that make a lot of left-handed uh, holsters at least right off the rack a lot of times you have to go to custom kydex people to get left-handed shit and if you have a new holster out there <clears throat> that does not have a left-handed option people aren't going to buy that so i i have made a big sticking point in that one that i think it was really fucking stupid to launch a new holster not having a left hand at least initially so now they do so now i'm just going to re-record it quick and just talk about a couple of the points that i like and some of the points that i do not like so one thing that i like <clears throat> well actually i'll go through the, a little bit of the changes from their older design on their g-code uh incog so as you can see basically it's one piece mold of uh, kydex which is basically one of the reasons why i prefer them because it's injective, injective mold of plastic rather than just kind of the sandwich uh, pancaking uh, that you have from other Kydex. I, I prefer this one. I think it's a little bit stronger. It's a little bit more durable. Uh, these, all plastics have a failure point, which this one did and actually G-Code replaced free of charge minus shipping, which is pretty sweet. So, uh, but all plastics have a failure point. I just prefer the kind of the clamshell one rather than the pancake where you have two separate pieces of Kydex kind of screwed together. Uh, my personal opinion, <clears throat> my personal preference as well. So obviously with the differences being the clips, obviously you have kind of your inline small thin clips. This one actually came with two because it had the uh, little mag carrier on the side. Uh, so this one has a little bit of a thinner one. It causes it to kind of cant on the belt. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, apparently my dog was hungry because she dropped her fucking dish on the floor uh, saying so. So anyway, this is a smaller, thinner clip, which basically allows the gun to kind of cant on the belt a little bit, um, which is sort of a good thing, sort of a bad thing. Basically what can happen though sometimes, depending on the belt and depending on the pants, is that sometimes the belt <clears throat> can actually cant too much and then all of a sudden your pistol grip is basically light in line with your belt. So you can't really get a grip on it, if that makes any sense. Uh, having a much thicker, wider uh, clip design basically prevents that rocking motion having the cant kind of happen <clears throat> on the holster when you don't really want it however though the the actually canting does help with comfortability and it does help with concealability i believe because say you want to be a little bit more concealable you can actually kind of push this fucker down a little bit uh into the belt line and make it a little bit more flush helps a bit i don't really do that but you know there that is something you can kind of do so obviously the clip design is different however the functionality in terms of the actual being able to cant the clip is not uh, down here they have the mojo and they also have the super mojo which takes the clip and puts a more center line of the holster which is kind of a silly in my opinion because i think this is better because this balances a lot better on the belt than having the clip over here but basically the functionality is the same you can actually take these screws out and kind of pivot this mojo so if you want to have the cant and the clip you can and then same thing here you basically just can cant this clip uh, however you want it if you want a certain type of cant if you're carrying it at three o'clock or wherever you carry it <clears throat> Um, but basically, anything else minus the tactical fuzz is not really a whole lot of things. One thing, though, I do like about this holster, besides the clip, is the fact that it's basically already RMR cut. Uh, basically, RMRs are going to come pretty big, or basically red dot sights on uh, uh, pistols, rather, 
are going to become pretty big. So I think already having one cut out that you don't have to pay extra is kind of a bonus. You can still have these things cut out uh, on these type of holsters, but they cost <clears throat> five extra bucks uh, to have that done. So that's just kind of a thing. So now let's get into the thing that I do not like about the holster. So obviously we don't have to go through the fact that they're not left-handed. So I, this is, you know, obviously for a right-handed uh, MMP 2.0. Not my gun, not my holster, <clears throat> but it's pretty good, uh, you know, to talk about. So anyway, the thing that's kind of the main driver that I really just don't really care for is the fact that this fucking shirt guard, at least right now, they have only one option, and that's the fucking high shirt guard, like such. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this kind of full shirt guard shit, because I think, one, it's unnecessary. Uh, this is how the incog is. So basically, when the gun is not in the holster and the holster is in the pants, uh, you only have a little bit kind of sticking out. So if I had to bend over for something, you know, it's not really going to fucking matter. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about like an actual defensive use, right? I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of the time you're actually going to be dealing with a gun in the holster and stuff like that is going to be training, right? Shooting at the range or drive practice or whatever. It's fucking annoying, when, you're, especially when you're doing draws and mag changes and all this shit, to have something spear you in the gut. And uh, as of right now, you can only have the highest shirt guard cover possible, and I think that's just kind of stupid. So hopefully they give an option uh, eventually to kind of round the sucker off, or you can do it yourself. But personally, if I'm paying 55 bucks, which is how much this thing costs, <clears throat> compared to, I believe, 75 for this, the price actually has gone up on this holster when I bought it with the mag carrier. It was 75 now I believe they're like 80 so not really too much of an increase, but, you know, <clears throat> it's there. But, yeah, so that's kind of a thing that kind of, kind of the major sticking point uh, to me with that kind of design. And then, like I said previously, because this basically is the same as the Stealth one, which I will touch on a little bit, there, there is a couple of slightly different cuts that they made into the holster. I'm not sure why, because you can see a little bit more muzzle for some fucking reason. I'm not sure why they made that cut. I mean, obviously, it just kind of seems like they're trying to make it more sexy than it really needs to be. It, it's, a, it's a holster. You know, I just want the fucking gun to be covered, especially the trigger guard. I don't really care if this shit's exposed or whatever, but... If you're going to charge more and basically all you're going to do is just kind of cut this out and then have like a little mojo thing sticking out so you can actually kind of, it kind of tucks the butt of the gun in a little bit. I don't really think that's really a, a much needed uh, change personally. Uh, one thing I will say though, is kind of a knock on G-Code at least <clears throat> as a whole from what I've kind of seen. So the older holster design had more of a straight uh, lip down here <clears throat> on, the, on the part of the muzzle of the gun. Now, what they decided to do was actually curve those fuckers in. So now, this holster I used to be able to run on 19, a 17, whatever the fuck I wanted to. Basically, as long as the trigger guard uh, basically was able to click in, it was good as long as the muzzle wasn't super duper long. But even if it was a 17 or a 34, it would still work because the, the part of the muzzle right, wasn't folded over there. That basically prevents me from putting a 17 or whatever gun I want to put in there with a the longer barrel. Um, they kind of do the same shit with the newer ones where they actually kind of pinch the front. This one's actually for a longer slide uh, M&P, but the, uh, the 2.0 compact works fine. This so. But yeah, they do that with the newer ones as well. And personally, I just don't understand why they would want to. I understand from a kind of a marketing and a, you know, kind of a sensible part, right? It's like, okay, if we only make a 19 holster, people can put their 17 and a 26 and whatever the fuck else they want to put in there, right? But if we make a 19 holster that can only accept a smaller one, that means they might have to buy another one to get a 17. That's just kind of a shitty thing. I just don't think it's necessary. I don't think the gun fits in better. I mean, it might slightly, but again, I mean, most of your tension is going to be on the actual trigger guard up here. So uh, it's just kind of a slight knock, in my opinion. I don't think they needed to do that. Uh, considering, especially, like I said, this was a, a holster I've had for four years that had the older style, which I'll just pull out my gun I have on now, which is more of the straight style, which is basically like this. So I can basically run. If I had a compensator on this bitch, yeah, I can run that. <clears throat> and that's the way it used to be, right? But now they've gone to a part where they just want to curve it for some reason. So this was basically replaced and they did that to it. And I'm not really a big fan of that, honestly. But anyway, uh, that's kind of a quick little overview of the new holsters. I still like G-code shit. I just wish they would kind of not do the silly shit, like curling the front end of the, uh, or the, the muzzle end of the holster. And also not immediately coming out with left-handed versions of their new shit. That's just kind of stupid in my opinion. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, you know, do what you guys got to do, drop a like, you know, hit subscribe, all that fun shit. So anyway, thank you guys for watching.
be good.